We are in the Emergencies Operations Center in WHO's headquarters in Geneva, and today we are talking about MPOX. Dr. Tedros, WHO's Director General, has declared this outbreak of MPOX a public health emergency of international concern. Dr. Salam is joining us from WHO's office in Brazzaville in the Republic of Congo. Welcome, Dr. Salam. Dr. Salam, MPOX as a viral disease has been around for decades. What is different about this outbreak to trigger this declaration of public health emergency of international concern? Thank you, Vismita. MPOX has traditionally been reported from some countries in Central and West Africa. In 2022, an outbreak erupted and became global when the disease spread to many countries that had never seen the virus before. What is happening in 2024 is a large number of cases in Democratic Republic of Congo, including the appearance of a new virus strain, grade 1B, which is spreading fast from person to person. Unlike the outbreak in 2022, where it was affecting mostly men who have sex with men, this time it is affecting everybody, women, male, and children. When WHO declares an outbreak a public health emergency of international concern, what does that mean for countries and what does that mean for the public? The public health emergency of international concern is the international health regulation tool that is given to the WHO Director General as the highest alert system in public health. It means that the international community should support the countries that need it. The companies that can make vaccine, diagnostic, or therapeutic should work with the partners that are able to fund it. The researchers should also look for solutions for the benefit of humankind. Could you please talk to us about how MPOX is transmitted? MPOX can be transmitted in different ways. The first way is a close contact, skin to skin, mouth to mouth, or sexual encounter. When a sick person is speaking very close to another person who is not sick, they may have some microparticles that are infectious. Another transmission way is from animal to human during the hunting, skinning, or cooking the animal. The third transmission way is through contaminated objects, such as seed, towel, and needle. Finally, the transmission may be vertical through a pregnant woman to the fetus or the baby. Dr. Salam, who is at risk of getting infected with MPOX? Everybody who is in contact with a sick person is at risk, particularly people at the household level or sexual partner. MPOX is also affecting healthcare workers that are advised to use the infection prevention and control tools but also to use personal protective equipment, particularly when they are taking care of patients that are sick or suspected to have MPOX, or when they are taking swap for diagnostic, or when they are taking care of a dead body. We are hearing a lot of lies and misinformation on social media that WHO is going to impose or force mega lockdowns uh, for MPOX. Could you please clarify? Let's make it very clear, Vismita. WHO does not have the authority to impose lockdown and has not recommended lockdowns. In this outbreak, lockdowns are not needed. We can control it by answering surveillance, good clinical care, and access to other countermeasures, more research, and supporting communities. For this international coordination and commitment, both political and financial are crucial. Let's talk about vaccines. Who should be getting vaccinated at this time? The vaccine should be for people at risk. People who are planning to travel should approach their caregiver to have more information. The quantity of vaccines that are available now are very limited. So we should use it very smart way. Evidence-based, focus, and targeted. Those uh, vaccines, if well used, can help to stop the chain of transmission. But they are not the only way to stop the chain of transmission. If we do an appropriate surveillance with early detection of cases and we make a monitoring of the contact of those cases, 
when they get sick, we isolate them very quickly and we give them appropriate treatment. And also when we make sure that those who do not have any symptom are taking very simple measure like washing hands. Thank you, Dr. Salam. That was Science in 5 today. Until next time then, stay safe, stay healthy, and stick with science. <laughs>